So this morning, I want to jump up a little bit to the 4th of July. America's Freedom Day. And as you can see, during all the distortion, there's some words there. And that's what happens with life. Those words became real. One nation under God. But when we start celebrating, we start doing everything that the nation brings forth, that those words start fading out. One nation under God. One nation under God. One nation under God. God bless America. Those words shouldn't be fading out. But they are. They're fading away from our government. They're fading away from our laws. They're fading away. Because a few decided that they don't want that. So everybody else is going to follow. But I'm sorry. Every time I pick up a penny, and I pick up a penny all the time. And you know what? I don't pick it up because I want that penny. I pick it up because I know that penny says one thing that I love that it says. That the American currency still says, in God we trust. In God we trust. And that is what America is about. But yet, we're losing that. We're giving away what protects us, our protection, God, that built this nation. He's going away. Not because he wants to, it's because we're letting him go. We know we're too big for you, Lord. <laughs> we don't need you. Friday is the 4th of July. It's the freedom that this nation offers that we can still go forth and preach the gospel. You know, over here on Washington Street, it's a young man, an older man, but he always takes the Bible. And it just trips me out because it, it makes a statement. He doesn't say a word to nobody. He doesn't speak to anybody. He doesn't do anything. He just goes to the corner of a, of a on Washington Street, I, I think Washington Rural. I'm not, I may be wrong about that. But he goes over to that corner. He gets on his knees. He faces his Bible. And for about four hours, he just sits there. And prays. He's not yelling. He's not shouting. But he has the freedom in the United States to get on his knees and praise the God that he believes. The God of this Bible. He continues to believe in this God. And he's not being arrested. He's not being tried. He's not being imprisoned. Because we still live in a great nation. But how long? How long? I'm going to read you some Bible verses. They're not on the front here, but I wanted to read these. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear their voice from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal their land. And will heal their land. America is in need of healing. We, our laws, are in need of healing. We're becoming too acceptable of different things. Just finished talking to my friend Steve, telling him about new laws that are going to be coming up. Where those laws that last week about same sex marriage just came up. The laws that are coming up next week are allowing people to steal. Being able to steal up to $700 before you get charged with a felony theft. Where 
I read on the newspaper that the uh, Indianapolis is trying to become a nation that is less tolerant to crime. So we're going to get our SWAT team and we're going to become less tolerant to crime in this city. But excuse me, your laws are not saying that. Your legislation is not saying that. Taking us, the God of our government, taking him out of our government is not saying that. This verse is not speaking about our government, though. This verse is not speaking about our government. It says it's about the Christian. It says, if my people. It's not talking about the Americans, the Jews. It's not talking about any one of them. He says, if my people are called by my name. He's not talking about the unsaved. He's talking about the saved. We cannot depend on our government to make our future brighter. We cannot depend on our law enforcement, teachers, or schools. It is not about the laws we pass. Amen to that. The moral codes we enforce. The curriculum we teach is about the God we serve. It is about the God we serve. Will you join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Father in Heaven, we are your people. Lord Father in Heaven, we accepted you in our hearts. We ask for forgiveness. And we believe that you died on the cross for our sins. And we believe that on the third day you were raised from the dead and are alive and well. And we believe that you are in heaven. And we believe in the Holy Spirit. And Lord Father, heaven, we believe in you. We you, Lord. We are thankful for you, Father in heaven, for everything you've done, Father. Lord Father in heaven. Have your way in our lives. We turn ourselves over to you this morning. Lord, we pray for America. We pray for our government. We pray for the President of the United States. We pray, Lord Father in heaven, for the governor of this state, the mayor of this state, and our officers, Lord Father in heaven. Lord Father in heaven, we specially lift up the Christian soldiers out there the Christian officers, the Christian doctors, the Christian teachers, Lord Father in heaven, for they need you right now. Those people that are working for the government, Lord Father in heaven, who are being forced, Lord Father in heaven, to, to do things, Lord Father in heaven, because the law has declared to. We ask that you look out for them, Lord Father in heaven. Lord Father in heaven, a hedge of protection around them. Keep them safe in every way. I praise your name, Lord Father in heaven, for everything you've done. And you're going to do. Lord, thank you for America. Thank you for blessing us. Father in heaven, don't forgive us. Don't forget us. Don't, don't leave us, Father. We need you. We need you in our homes. I start with me, Father. I need you in my home. Every Christian, Father in heaven, needs you, Father in heaven, and we don't want to let you go. Show us what to do. Teach us what to do. Show us when to stand up. And show us when to sit down. Show us when to speak up. And show us when to quiet. Show us, Father in heaven, let our spirit grow. Thank you, Father. For this day, I praise your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. We are to pray for our nation. And we are to pray for our government. But if you haven't guessed the title 
of this lesson, of this sermon, is one nation under God. One nation under God. Why are people so offended to say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Everything is fine till you get to that phrase. One nation under God. Oh, no, I'm not saying it. Then don't say it. But why must you stop me from saying it? Why do I have to not be able to deny my God because you get offended? Just don't say it. Cover your ears. Don't want to hear it. But this is America. It's the friend of, land of the free where you can speak. People are getting away with so much language and bad language out there and says, this is America. I got the right for freedom of speech. Really? Get out there and say something anti-gay. And you will be considered as a hate crime. And you know what? That's just one sin. That's just one sin. People get so focused on that. There's so many other sins out there. But we need to understand that if we are considered to be one nation under God, we need to follow the laws of God, the commandments of God. But I'm going to get off page for a sec get off my soapbox for a second. <laughs> Praise God. Freedom is not free. Like our Lord and Savior who gave his life for his people. Our country was founded on people who gave their life for their nation. And people who would have given their life. People who would have given their life. People like Uncle Glenn over there who served our country. Anybody else served their country in the, in the military? Joe, I'm in the military. Thank you. You guys, oh, Chuck's hiding behind the wall there. <laughs> he served their nation. Thank you. See, why I thank them is because this man joined up the military. Because when you join the military, this is my pet peeve. When people join the military, they join because they are going to defend the nation and that flag and there is a chance that they're going to give their life. They may not go in with that intention, but they understand they're going in and they're willing to do so. But a few years back, my 10 years back, there was a, a controversy about people who, oh, I, I'm going to join the military. I'm going to go to school. But when it came time to come back, they're like, I'm against that. Uh, no, you joined the military. That is what the military does. Or oh, I'm not going to battle. <laughs> you shouldn't have joined the military. <laughs> but this is my point. Those people. Even if they did not die on that plane, they gave and they put the intention to give in their life. Thank you for that. And this is one of those stories. Bravery, honor by a foe. In a rifle pit on the brow of the hill near Fredericksburg, where a number of Confederate soldiers who had exhausted ammunition in the vain attempt to check the advancing column of hookers finally hookers 
finely equipped and disciplined army which was crossing the river. The relief of these few came at the, the brigade in a double quick time. But no sooner were the soldiers entrenched than the firing of the opposite side of the river became horrific or terrific. A heavy mist of obs obscured the scene. The federal soldiers pour a mercy of fire into the, into the trenches. Soon many Confederates fell and agonized cries of the wounded who lay there calling for the water. Smote the, the hearts of their hopeless comrades. Water, water, but there was none to give. The canteens were empty. Boys exclaimed, Nathan Cunningham, a lad of 18, the color bearer of his regiment. I can't stand it, this anymore. They want water, and water they must have. So let me have a few canteens, and I'll go for some. Carefully laying the colors which he had borne on the many, many of a field in a trench. He sees some canteens and leaps soon out of sight. Shortly after the firing ceased for a while, and an order came for the men to fall back to the main line. As the Confederates were retreating, they met Nathan Cunningham. His canteens were full of water, hurting to the relief the thirst of the wounded men in the trenches. He glanced over the passing column and saw the faded flag which he had carried so long. And it was not there. The men in their haste to obey orders had forgotten or overlooked the colors. Quickly, the lad sped to the trenches and to the now not only on giving water to, to his comrades, but in rescuing the flag. And so to save the honor of his regiment, his mission of mercy was soon accomplished. The wounded man drank freely. The lad then found a cease and seized his color and turned to rejoin his regiment. Scarcely had he gone three paces when a company of federal soldiers appeared, ascending the hill. Halt and surrender, came the stern command, and a hundred rifles were leveled at the boy's breast. What does the boy say? <laughs> Never! <laughs> Never. While I hold the colors was his firm reply. Never. The morning sun piercing with a lurid glare to the dense mist showed the lad proudly standing with his head thrown back and his flag grasping his hand while his unprotected breast was exposed to the fire of his foe. A moment's pause. Then the federal officer gave his command. Back with your pieces, man. Don't shoot the brave boy. He stood up for what he believed. Against a hundred men. Against a hundred rifles. He stood up for what he believed. He was ready to give up his life. He was ready to give up his life. So, don't give up. These things must happen before Jesus comes back. Things we're witnessing, these things must happen before Jesus comes back. We just need to stand our ground. We just need to stand with our God. 
And I will always believe one nation under God. Even if I'm the only one standing. One nation under God. One nation under God. And Nathan Cunningham, with the colors flying over his head, passed and joined his regiment. His camera, comrades and arms still tell the pride of this brave deed and of the generous act of a foe. Think of the Bible, how many people gave their lives for what they believe. And because of that, we're here today as Christians, believing in God and understanding that God is a great God. He's an awesome God. And I believe in God. Do you believe in God? He's an awesome God. Psalms 33, 12 declares, Blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. Blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. God bless America. It was founded on God. America walked away from England because they wanted the freedom to praise. They wanted the freedom to praise God. And the verse continues and says, And the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. You know, I once was called to the store manager's office. And amongst about five, six managers, they stood there having a meeting. <laughs> and amongst this meeting, they couldn't decide how to help the Boy Scouts. And they asked, they, they, they were asking, they were trying to help the Boy Scouts and they were trying to give them and write down the Pledge of the Legions. It's like, seriously? He said, well, we're having trouble. I know it's I pledge. I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, and liberty and justice for all. I was like in shock and amazed. But under God was a conversation. <laughs> under God was a situation. We don't want to offend anybody. Well, too late for that. <laughs> what do you mean? But you just offended me. <laughs> so too late for that. Independence Day is the declaration of independence by Washington Irving. While danger was gathering around New York, its inhabitants were mute suspense and fearful anticipations. The General Congress at Philadelphia was discussing with closed doors, what John Adams pronounced the greatest question ever debated in America, as a great as ever was, was or will be debated among the men, the result was a resolution passed unanimously on the 2nd of July. The title, the, the, this, the this United, this United Colonies are of the right odds to be free and independent states. The 2nd of July, as the same Patriot statement, will be the most more memorable epic, epic in the history of America. And I am apt to believe that I will be celebrated by succeeding generations of the great anniversary first festival. It ought to be commemorated as the deliverance by solemn acts of devotion to the mighty God. It ought to be solemnized with pomp, pomp and parade which shows gains, sports, bonfires, and illuminations from one end of this continent to the other. From this time forth and forevermore, 
The glorious event has indeed given rise, rise to annual jubilee, but not on that day designed by Adams, but the 4th of July. A day of national rejoicing. For that day, Declaration of Independence, the solemn sibling document, was adopted. Tradition for the America. That's America. It's about God. That what was America was about. About God. That is why God blessed America. Because we believe in him. The people who were called by his name believe in him. I still believe in America. I still believe in America. Could you go to the next slide, please? Galatians 5.13. Galatians 5.13. I skipped it for some reason. Huh. Praise God. For some reason it didn't print out on my paper. Galatians 5.13. King James Version. For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an accusation accusation to the flesh but by love serve one another and I love the way the NIV reads it Galatians 5 13 you my brothers and sisters were called to be free but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh rather serve one another humbly in love pretty much tells you because just because man says it's okay God's law does not and these things are going to happen these things must happen before God comes back but I have a word this morning from a man that I respect, formerly known as President Ronald Reagan. And he has a video out there, and I want to show it to you this morning. On the eve of our struggle for independence, a man who might have been one of the greatest among the founding fathers, Dr. Joseph Warren, President of the Massachusetts Congress said to his fellow Americans, our country is in danger, but not to be despaired of. On you depend the fortunes of America. You are to decide the important question which, upon which rests the happiness and the liberty of millions yet unborn. Act worthy of yourselves. Well, I believe we, the Americans of today, are ready to act worthy of ourselves ready to do what must be done to ensure happiness and liberty for ourselves, our children, and our children's children. From time to time, we've been tempted to believe that society has become too complex to be managed by self-rule, that government by an elite group is superior to government for, by, and of the people. We are a nation that has a government, not the other way around. And this makes us special among the nations of the earth. Our government has no power except that granted it by the people. It is made up of men and women who raise our food, patrol our streets, man our mines and factories, teach our children, keep our homes, and heal us when we're sick. Professionals, industrialists, shopkeepers, clerks, cabbies, and truck drivers. They are, in short, we the people. Their patriotism is quiet but deep. Their values sustain our national life. With the idealism and fair play, which are the core of our system and our strength, we can have a strong and prosperous America at peace with itself and the world. 
So with all the creative energy at our command, let us begin an era of national renewal. Let us renew our determination, our courage, and our strength. And let us renew our faith and our hope. It is time for us to realize that we are too great a nation to limit ourselves to small dreams. We will again be the exemplar of freedom and a beacon of hope for those who do not now have freedom. We are a nation under God, and I believe God intended for us to be free. One nation under God. And I too believe that we can have revival in America again. It took 12 to turn the world around. And I count more than 12 here. I may be wrong, but <laughs> praise God. But I know that we can turn this around. We can turn this country around. Pastor, it's just way too much. I can't even control my own life. That's where you start. With your own life. We start leading by example. Because I don't know about you, but I'm part of we the people. I am a part of we the people. I am a part of one nation under God. I count too. My faith counts too. My beliefs count too. And I still believe in one nation under God. 